Okay guys, welcome back to Sujo, and we're going to be looking at the classical gardens here which are world famous. There are over 60 gardens here ranging from the Song Dynasty all the way through to the Qing Dynasty so almost a thousand years and we're going to be visiting gardens from each dynasty starting here at the oldest of the gardens. This is the oldest in the city dating way back to 1044 during China's Song Dynasty. If you're in Suzhou, definitely make a point of visiting this one. The name roughly translates to Surging Waves Pavilion, which is a reference to a line from a poem by Chu Yuan. Chu Yuan, a poet and politician from a much earlier time, is famed throughout China. The story goes that Chu Yuan was exiled from his home state for rather dubious reasons, and later, when his state capital was captured by invading forces, he threw himself into a river to commit suicide. Some local people rowed out in boats to save him, but were too late. So, they threw a load of sticky rice in the river so the fish would eat that rather than Chu Yuan's body. And this is the origin of Dragon Boat Festival. Anyway, very nice place to explore. I love it. So it's an old garden, so obviously it's had many different owners throughout the, uh, throughout the years, throughout the centuries. Uh, but it's basically kept its basic layout from the Song Dynasty, which makes it quite, you know, quite unique. There are not many, many gardens of this age anywhere in China. I honestly think these places are so amazing. They're like, a, just like a labyrinth. It's so different when you think about uh, traditional European style gardens, which were very symmetrical and, uh, you know, grand. And these gardens are like everywhere reveals another secret. There are actually, um, you know, classical Chinese gardens in many cities in China, especially down in the south. But Suzhou is, without doubt, you know, it has the greatest concentration. And all of them together, there's, I think there's 69 altogether, they're designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. There are a few which are super famous and uh, you know, very busy. But if you want to find something that is a little bit more quiet, peaceful, there are plenty to choose from. I mean, even this is the oldest one in the city, and as you can see, it's actually only a handful of people here. Definitely not one of the most famous gardens, but so, so beautiful. Everywhere you look is a new magic view. I feel like to really understand these gardens, one should probably visit in each season. I will be back. So just opposite Tanglan Pavilion, there is also uh, another garden called Ke Garden, which is here. It's all like a combined ticket. It's quite, you know, so if you're gonna come to one, come to the other, come to this one as well. Um, also, lovely, it used to be part of Sanglang Pavilion and now is a separate garden. You know, all the time I'm walking around these gardens, I'm just thinking about one thing. My mum would love this. <laughs> So a pavilion like this on slightly higher ground, open on all sides, is a very common feature of Suzhou garden design. And the idea is it gives you a bit more of a vantage point to see more of the garden, but of course it will never let you see the whole garden because that is not the point. The garden should always keep some secrets and surprises to keep you guessing, you know, every corner reveals something new. So we've left the Song Dynasty now and moved to the Yuan Dynasty. This is the Lion Grove Garden. It's one of the four famous gardens in Suzhou and therefore is full of two groups and girls dressed in costumes and taking photos of themselves. <laughs> really give me a sense of peace and tranquility that um, the Sanglang Pavilion did. <laughs> Lots of screaming kids around. Saying that, these rocks are basically a playground, right, for little kids. Kind of nice. 
So this garden is most famous for its rock gardens, which you know, emperors came here to visit them, and uh, inspired them so much that they even took the ideas and built similar gardens in the Imperial Gardens in Beijing, in like the Summer Palace. <laughs> Dating to 1342, this is a vast garden, one of the biggest in the city and one of the most famous. The garden was built by a Buddhist monk, but after his death fell into a state of ruin. It was later taken up by another Buddhist monk, however, a couple of centuries later and restored. The huge stones here, as in most gardens in Suzhou, come from near Lake Tai. Lake Tai stone is a kind of limestone and due to being porous erodes into all kinds of weird and wonderful shapes, perfect for any traditional Chinese garden. This was probably my least favourite of the gardens I visited today, but if you do want to visit one of the larger more famous gardens in Suzhou, it's a decent choice. All right, guys, so for our Ming Dynasty garden, we are not going to the two very famous ones because screw that. We're going to find a little beautiful, peaceful example of a Ming Dynasty garden in Suzhou. It's called the Garden of Cultivation. It's kind of lost in these little alleyways. Let's have a look. And here it is, a very unassuming entrance. This garden is totally more my speed. Beautiful and peaceful. This garden dates to 1541 in the Ming Dynasty. And um, it's not one of the better known gardens, mainly because it's so hidden in the alleyways, uh, just in, inside the old city of Suzhou. But you know, when you're walking down the alley, it looks like this tiny little place. And you go in and like all these gardens, they just reveal constant secrets, you know? Everything's cut off from view. You think like, maybe that's the end of the garden and you walk through just around another corner, around a rock, it just opens up into a whole new section. This is one of the smaller gardens and not on the tourist trail at all. I loved it. <laughs> Okay, yeah, there is a guy cutting through metal with an angle grinder, but don't let that distract you. This place was magic. A large lake fills the centre of the garden with a few buildings and walkways surrounding it, but once you follow one of the small paths or walk through a moon door, the gardens open up into endless new views. Maybe my favourite of the whole day. If you are looking for peace and tranquility, be sure to check this one out. So this is our final garden today. It's the Garden of Pleasance. And it's the most recent garden in Suzhou. It was built at the end of the 19th century, so towards the end of the Qing Dynasty. And it's right in the center of the, like, the, this busy part of town. Then you get here and all that traffic noise disappears. Beautiful, beautiful. So this garden is really famous because it kind of combines all of the elements you know, of a traditional Chinese garden in one place. It's like the only place that does it. So it's, um, yeah, it's kind of a blueprint for the perfect garden, if that makes sense. You know, some of these gardens are actually in a relatively small space, but when you're inside them, because there's so much that is not revealed, they feel huge. They feel absolutely vast. Like they just go on and on forever with endless little paths and walkways. Quite blown away by it, to be honest. And so to the final garden of the day and the final imperial dynasty of Chinese history. My hotel was just up the street from here and I kind of walked into this one by accident. No complaints here though, this is a great garden full of beautiful features and zigzaggy paths to walk.
Oh, and also this cat, which has probably the best home a cat could hope to have. Birds, fish, rocks to climb on, things to jump over. Yeah, he seems pretty happy. I've had a great time here in Suzhou, and these gardens are fantastic. Today, we visited five, which means there are another 64 to look at in Suzhou. Next time. And at the highest pavilion is where we're going to finish this video today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. These are truly wonderful places to visit. So until next time, all the best, take care and bye-bye.